All right, we're good to go. Right. Okay. Well, thank you all for attending. Um, this is another uh, one in a series of uh, presentations being brought to you by Arizona AWWA. These are the type of things that will help keep your PDH hours up. Um, it's fortunate that AWWA and all these other ancillary groups do these kind of things. It enables us to keep your hours and keeps you abreast of what's going on in the industry. Um, today, I wanted to talk a little bit about um, some of the services the company I work for, Tapmaster, offers. Um, not as an advertisement, but more of an educational uh, presentation, just so you know some of these services are out there. I do these presentations for engineering firms and municipalities and so on and so forth. And it's amazing how many people had these little light bulbs that go off above their head that have no idea some of these things are even available. So please ask questions. Um, I love questions. You can do the chat. Uh, Shane is going to be monitoring that. If you have a question, raise your hand or, or do the chat. Um, but ask it time it, it's it's no better if you're thinking about it chances are there's five or six other people who are thinking about the same question and they may be afraid to ask but please please don't be afraid to ask uh, we're going to talk about basically four key services today that we offer that are available to you line stopping valve insertions pipe freezing and tapping now with those four core services there's a lot of other services that go along with them um, and specifically or basically on all types of pipe now i do want to add a small caveat for that we, we do ductile cast ac pvc c900 ccp cmlc hdpe copper steel all these types of different pipes the only one we can't do is wood and i had a call from a gentleman in a small southern mining town in arizona a few months back that had two eight inch lines that needed to have insert valves and i said well what kind of pipe is he said we don't know we haven't dug it up yet and I had to ask the question because the valves we would put in are dependent upon the ID of the pipe. Well, he called a couple of days later and said, well, they're redwood. And I just said, you know what? Call your local carpenter because we can't work on redwood pipe. But there's still a lot of it in use. And I put these pictures in here just because it's, it's amazing today that we take for granted that we lay pipe in mostly 20 foot sections, some 13 foot, but 20 foot sections. And here these guys are back in the old days laying pipe with boards. And then you can see where they're putting these stiffening straps on like every two inches. I mean, it's it's very labor intensive, but it lasted for 100 or better years. So anyway, we we really have it made. Um, I like this picture just because this is this was back east, uh, New York, um, two pipes that were hand laid bricks. And if you look closely, you can see their double layers. Um, this this is just amazing how something like this was made and done back in the day when they didn't have PVC or cast iron or duct iron, um, but we've come a long way. Okay, first thing we're going to talk about are line stops. Line stops are mechanical or molecular. And when I say molecular, that's just a fancy way of saying freezing. But we're going to talk about the mechanical stops right off the bat. Uh, but a temporary way to stop water or stop a liquid in a pipe to isolate it. Um, we can do that without interruption of service by offering a bypass. It can be done as a single, a double, uh, bypass, no bypass. Uh, mechanical ones are up to 60 inch currently and freezing is up to 24 and again I say all types of pipes but a small caveat again is on freezing you can't freeze PVC or asbestos cement well you can but you'll have catastrophic results so freezing is done basically on metallic based pipes but again hold freezing for a little bit we'll get into that but mechanical is what we're going to cover first off <clears throat> excuse me just, just a little small diagram of basically what a line stop is. Uh, uh, this was a particular double line stop. But what we can do is, oh, sorry, let me get my pointer out here. Basically, a double line stop is where we can put a stop in the pipe here and a stop in the pipe here, which isolates this center section. So a, a municipality or company or maintenance companies can actually pull out that section of pipe, maybe a bad valve, maybe a pump, a motor, those types of things are where they can work on. Now, if this particular their situation if they wanted to bypass we could go from here to here so the water or chemical compound would go in here through here through here so nobody would ever know this section of pipe is being isolated uh, again no downtime to customers now this is a, a line stop head it is laying down in our shop floor but i wanted to show you the head what's what's really crucial about this is what we do is if you have a 24 inch pipe and you take a 24 inch coupon out of that pipe you've now greatly weaken the structural integrity of that pipe. So the smaller hole you can take out of that pipe, the better. So this is what's called a folding headline stop. As you can see here, it's a 24 inch line, but we're gonna be going through a 16 inch hole. This head folds up 
and it goes down in a 16 inch hole and then once it's in the pipe it, the wings open up and it stops the water this bottom part here is what's called the sealing device now this sealing device is is basically a big rubber skirt in this particular instance here in this picture is made of kevlar but it can be made out of edpm um, Kevlar, different materials and compounds depending upon, again, what's in the pipe or the media in the pipe. We do steam, we do water, oil, gas, um, natural gas. So again, depending on what's in the pipe is to what this sealing device is made of. But the sealing device is, is a, has a very large, this device you're looking at here is about a two and a half or three inch skirt on it. So it's very large because we can't ever tell what's inside your pipe. We're working blind, basically. So in municipal water systems, there's a lot of tuberculum in the pipe, which leaves a rough surface on the interior side of the pipe. So this large skirt here helps with that um, sealing up against that tuberculum. Next picture is a picture of the sealing device or the folding head in the open position. But again, a good picture of the skirt. And I'll show you more pictures here of these devices installed. But again, what's unique is we go through a smaller opening. Here's a picture of a 36 inch head going through a 24 inch hole. Uh, again, keeping as much structural integrity in that pipe as possible. Here's a picture of that 24 inch and you can see the hinge lines here where it went in through the pipe through a smaller hole, 16 inch hole, and then opened up in a 24 inch pipe. But you can see this pipe is, is pretty clean. It's got slight tuberculation on it, but not very much. This is a pretty good looking pipe, but you can see as we had almost 100% stop on this pipe and there's full pressure behind that line stop head right now. Same thing with this picture. This is that same 36 inch one I showed you currently folded up. Um, but again, this is a duct liner pipe. Here's a little bit of the um, tap at the top of the 24 inch hole. But this was a duct liner pipe, which you can see a little bit of the cement coal uh, tar bitch mastic coating that's on the inside with the cement lining on the inside that does come off when you do cut a hole in the pipe but as far as pressure this is full pressure behind this this one had 110 psi behind it which allowed the municipality to actually cut the pipe cut out a pump uh, put in a new pump put in a valve so on and so forth now this is a i kind of want to pay a lot of attention to this picture because this is a scenario that plays out with us often very often Every municipality has a storage tank with one, two, three, four, five million gallons of water in it. And every municipality has a valve from 1962 that doesn't work. So this is the kind of scenario where we get called on quite often. But I wanted to use this picture to kind of clarify what a line stop is. What we do is we put a sleeve on the pipe. We clean the pipe, descale the pipe, put this sleeve on the pipe. Um, it's much like a tap sleeve, but not quite. It has set screws around the flange. Um, and it uh, has a completion plug inside the neck, and we'll follow up with those here in a minute. But what happens is we put this sleeve on the pipe, we put a temporary valve on top of there, we close this valve, and then we pressure test it. We pressure test from this valve down to the sleeve. We want to make sure before we cut a hole in the pipe that there's no leaks around this sleeve or anywhere in the valve. At that point, we put on this apparatus on top, which has a shell cutter in it. Now, a shell cutter is just a fancy name for a hole saw, a very big hole saw, but a hole saw. So at that point, it's put on the valve with gaskets, nuts, and bolts, so it's sealed tight. The valve is opened. The shell cutter is run right down through into the pipe and cuts a hole in the pipe. At that point, we pull it back up. We close this temporary valve. At that point, that valve and that sleeve are now live. This apparatus is taken off, and the shell cutter, or the hole saw, is taken out, and the line stop head is put in. Once the line stop head is put in, the valve is opened up. The line stop head goes down in and stops the water. Now, at that time, the customer can actually cut the pipe. Now you notice here, there's a 100% stop here. There's no flow. This is a, just a duct iron pipe, but it allowed the customer to actually put in a whole new system. What they did is put in a control valve, but these control valves, if anybody ever had an experience with them, they always need work. They always need to be adjusted or taken out of service to repair or uh, rebuilt. So this municipality actually put in valves, but they put in a bypass. So now in the future, their old valve from 1962 that they couldn't shut down. They can actually shut down, but they still have a bypass so they can continue service with their customers so nobody's interrupted. Now this is a picture, again, it's just a, a sketch, but it's a picture of a line stop sleeve, what it looks like. This is what's called the completion plug. So once we're done, we take the temporary valve off, the completion plug is set in, the set screws go into it and hold the completion plug in. It's got O-rings in it, and then a blind flange is put on the top, essentially just to cover it and keep the dirt out. Now, what's unique about that 
and I'm going to back up one picture. This is what that looks like once it's done and the blind flange is put on the top. The unique thing about this is we can come back in five years, 10 years, 20 years, and we can put a line stop back in that same fitting. But this is how we would leave the fitting. The, the completion plug is in the neck and the blind flange is on the top just to keep the dirt out, but it can be revitalized and reused over and over again. This is a picture of a, I know it's tough to see the picture on the right, but this is a picture of a double line stop on a 36 inch line. They had a stop here and we had a stop here. And then the customer put in this 24 inch bypass with HDPE pipe again, just so they didn't have any interruption of service to their customers. But this whole center section was completely taken out. So it allowed them to work on that pipe without any interruption to customers. Again, just kind of a rudimentary picture of a double line stop with a bypass. Now the bypass, I want to explain this. The bypass can be done actually through a separate fitting or it can be line stop housing itself. It just depends on the, the flow you need, um, what kind of pipe it is, so on and so forth. And again, coming up will help explain that. This is a uh, mechanical room. This is actually the uh, hospital in uh, Las, uh, North Las Vegas. Um, but they needed to pull out this section of pipe and valves right here. So we did a line stop here, a line stop here, and the bypass just comes around and goes right around and bypasses it. Now the bypass can be made out of anything. The bypass can be made of duct line, it can be PVC, HDPE, it can be a fire hose. It doesn't matter. It depends upon whatever the flow need is for the customer. So the bypass, again, is just temporary. So it can be made of literally any type of piping material. This is a job in Colorado outside of Denver that we did. It was a 36 inch uh, CMLC pipe, uh, which is a very thin wall steel cylinder pipe inside with bonding wire wrapped around it and then a concrete coating on the outside. Um, but that type of pipe here, what we did is a line stop here, line stop here, and then welded on separate fittings to do a bypass with HDPE. That allowed them to pull this section of pipe out of service and do what they needed to do. But again, there was never an interruption of service to customers. Now, this was a neat, unique situation. This was uh, in uh, Northern California, but this was a um, where they had to do a double stop and put in a service valve, another control valve, but they wanted to put in a bypass that was permanent, so they used ductile iron pipe. Now, the reason this is above ground is because there's a building that's going to be built over the top of this whole um, assembly here. It's a, a brick building when he built, so it's kind of unique that we were able to do it above ground. But it's just a good illustration of the uh, bypass. Um, natural gas, we, I have this picture in here just to illustrate that we can do natural gas. It's, it's basically the same process. Here's a, a line stop here, a line stop here, and there's a bypass going around. So again, there's anybody that's cooking or gas water heaters, so on and so forth, never knows there's an interruption of service. Uh, this picture is um, indicative of what we do in mechanical rooms. Most of the uh, equipment that's used underground is the same equipment that's used in a mechanical room or in a casino or a hotel or a shopping center, wherever it may be. The equipment is just usually hauled up in the air by chain falls um, and man lifts and so on and so forth. But it's just a good good picture to illustrate that line stops can be done inside also. Same with this picture. Now this one illustrates here, we could have put a bypass from here to here, but the customer didn't need one in this scenario, so we didn't. Now this is CMLC pipe. This is a, a type of pipe that's pretty prevalent in the United States and we do a lot of work on it. What's interesting about this pipe, if you don't know what you're doing, you can get in a lot of trouble fast. This wire, bonding wire that's wound around like a tight spring around the pipe is a continuous length that goes the length of the fitting or the length of the pipe, section of pipe. So if you just cut this bonding wire, it's gonna unravel like a giant spring and it will therefore take the concrete coating off on 50, 20 feet of each either side of where you're working. So in this picture here, this shows what we do is we dig into the pipe. The welder will tack on the bonding wire to the host pipe. He'll do that on both ends. Then this allows us to chip the concrete off and cut the bonding wire off the pipe. This particular one was a line stop. So here's the nozzle that's going to be welded on. And here you can see the pipe. The coating is chipped off the pipe. The bonding wire, you can see the lines where the bonding wire was. And this nozzle is being welded on to the pipe, the host pipe, because we're going to put a line stop in. And here's what the welders are doing is just welding that nozzle onto the pipe. And they put the stiffener ring in the center because when we put a hole saw or the shell cutter inside here to cut this coupon out, this host pipe is very thin and it tends to spring out. So we put this stiffener ring on to make sure the 36 inch pipe retains its original concave shape. So when we pull it out, it doesn't cause any issues. Once that nozzle is welded on, 
Then what's called wrapper pads, these other half clamshell um, steel cylinders are welded around the pipe. Again, that's to help the pipe retain its structural integrity. Once that's done, then we do a pressure test, which is what's being done here. But this nozzle is welded on independently of these wrapper pads. They have nothing to do with any sealing or leaking. They're just welded on to give the pipe its structural integrity. Um, here's a picture, and I'm sorry I missed a couple pictures in between, but there's, here's a picture of that same stop. Um, they're actually cutting it out right now, and then here's the um, line stop being performed on that same pipe. Uh, again, just another picture of an inside factory. This was a casino in Las Vegas, but uh, it was just a, there were eight boilers in this uh, succession, in this boiler room, in this mechanical room, and they had to replace one boiler, so we came in and did a line stop. There's what the line stop looks like. Welded on the fitting and then stopped it. Uh, just another mechanical room picture. This is a municipal well site. This was actually in Arizona, uh, but a uh, well site had a uh, mag meter that was installed and the mag meter went bad um, and they had no way to shut this line down. This particular butterfly valve here in the end was uh, malfunctioning. So we came in and did a stop here, a stop here, stop the flow and pulled the mag meter out, put a new mag meter in. This is just, a, a again, a, a, a picture of a, a line stop, a temporary bypass with C900. Um, pretty prevalent picture that we do all the time. This is a good picture of the finished product when we're done. The completion plug is inside this neck, and then this blind flange goes on just to keep the dirt out. Um, this, the reason I took this picture is just because it represents AC pipe, asbestos cement pipe. There's a lot of that in the United States, and many people are afraid to work on it. Um, we do it all the time. Um, it's very easily um, tapped or done a line stop on. Um, it's very good pipe. Um, it's been in the ground for almost 100 years now. It's AC's been around, but it's phased out. As you all know, asbestos cement is no longer sold in, in pipe or brake shoes or clutches, things like that. But there's still a lot of it in the ground, and we still work with it day in and day out. Good picture of an inside of a stop. This is an eight inch line uh, that had 60 PSI behind it. Again, 100% stop, but you can see how clean the pipe is. That enabled us to get a good stop. And I have some other pictures here that I'll show you that are not as clean. Picture of a 24 inch, the picture's uh, real good because you can see the hinge lines here. Uh, again, this went through a 16 inch hole, good steel cylinder pipe, but again, a 100% stop. There's full pressure behind that stop. Uh, this is another one, this is in Nevada. Um, but a, again, a double line stop. This section of pipe here had to be pulled out. They were building a big water storage tank over here on the left side, which is right side on this picture. But they had to put this Y in there. Um, this Y was going to have a control valve and a couple other valves. Um, but we did a double stop. There could have been a bypass from here to here, but they didn't need one. So we just did a double stop to isolate this section of pipe. And you can see the Line stop sleeve on this end is buttoned up and ready to go. And this end, they're just putting the blind flange on the end just to cover up, keep dirt out. This was a line stop on a 1930s cast iron pipe in downtown city of Phoenix. Um, but this, this next picture I'm going to show you is indicative of all, all the pipes that we are all drinking out of. This is the tuberculum I was talking about before. It's, it's, there's nothing hazardous or... Um, bad for your health in this, in these barnacles, I call them, but it's tuberculum. It's basically magnesium, calcium, and other compounds that are in our drinking water that tend to stick to pipe. Now, this particular picture is extreme because it's a cast iron pipe, one from the 1930s and the fact that it's cast iron pipe. Cast iron tends to collect tuberculum much more readily than ductile iron or C900. So you really wouldn't see this uh, a lot on inside of a uh, ductile or PVC pipe, but it's a very good seal and that this is where the long skirt on the sealing device comes in because there's a lot of rough surface here, but we got a hundred percent stop on this. So it is possible to stop water on just about any pipe other than wood. Uh, but this is a 42 inch line stop. Again, a good picture of the folding head going in through a 24 inch hole, but this allowed the customer to completely pull the butterfly valve out that was no good and replace it with another butterfly valve. Okay, any questions on line stopping? If not, we'll continue on to pipe freezing. <coughs> Excuse me. Pipe freezing is another way to stop water in a pipe. Unlike the mechanical way of a line stop, pipe freezing is basically just what it sounds like. We would actually freeze the media that's in the pipe, creating a plug. Uh, unique thing about it is you don't have to cut a hole in the pipe. Um, 
the really any metallic based pipe. There's no bolt on fittings. There's no weld on fittings. Um, there's a lot of times if you have a chilling tower or a cooling tower that may have ethylene glycol or rust and corrosion inhibitors in it for your pumps. A uh, unique way of freezing is that we can freeze it, keep all that water in that tower, allows the municipality to work on a pump or a valve or whatever it may be. When they're done, just unfreeze it and it's good to go. A lot of those additives uh, cost a lot of money. The ethylene glycol and the uh, corrosion and rust inhibitors and lubricants in cooling towers are very expensive. Rather than evacuating all that fluid, we can come in and do a stop or a freeze and save all those liquids. Um, Dave, we, we do have one question. Sure. And I know you said interrupt if so we were um, no, keeping it there. Okay, all right. Um, are there pressure limitations for line stops? And is it uh, max pressure? Um, there is. Now let me let me qualify that. There's there's pressure differences because most municipalities are 150 psi or, or lower. Um, we get into some places like in Colorado, we're running to two or 250 pretty regularly um, in mountainous areas. Um, but there is high pressure equipment that uh, can be used. Most municipalities don't have anything above 250 or 300. Um, you get into the oil refinery business and then you get into the five and 600, which is different equipment. But as far as anything in a municipal system, um, anything that we have or do will handle anything that any city can throw at us. Um, but again, most municipalities are 150 PSI or below, unless you're in a mountainous state or next to a pump, could be, where we get up to 2, 250, sometimes 275. But yeah, all the equipment we have, or that most companies have, can handle that type of pressure. Does that answer that pretty sufficiently? And if not, let me know. Anyway, back to freezing. Um, What's unique about this ethylene glycol, ethylene glycol is basically antifreeze. So if you have antifreeze in your lines, what's unique about it is we can come in and we can freeze up to 30% ethylene glycol, which is a very high content of antifreeze. In order to do that, what we do is we take a sample of the liquid, we take it back to one of our shops and we will try and freeze it. If it's a successful freeze, then we will go ahead and do the freeze on the pipe itself. But what's unique about what we do is most cities, plumbers, contractors, so on and so forth, can freeze service lines usually two inch and below. When they do that, they're usually using CO2. CO2 goes to 109 below zero, and it works great on small lines. But the fact that we can do up to 24 inch lines, we use another compound called liquid nitrogen. Liquid nitrogen goes to 325 below zero. So we can freeze quicker, we can hold a plug longer, uh, we can hold it indefinitely, um, but it works very, very well. Now, without admitting it, have any of you ever stuck your tongue to a metal object in the middle of winter? Uh, much like the movie, uh, the Christmas movie, Christmas Story, I believe it is, where Ralphie sticks his tongue on the flagpole. His tongue will stick to it. <coughs> Excuse me. Well, that happens on the inside of pipe with nitrogen. The plug basically is stuck to the pipe and will not move. We did a test spool in one of our shops and we uh, pressure tested it up to 2,500 PSI, we could not get the plug to move. Um, we didn't go any higher because our pump only went to 2,500 PSI, but it's very few water systems are ever going to see that type of a pressure. Um, what happens is it's basically a, a aluminum collar that goes around the pipe and it there's a void bet between the collar and the pipe. That enables us to inject liquid nitrogen and surround the pipe with liquid nitrogen. This particular picture here is an oil line pipe that they had a leak in a weld. So what they do is they evacuate the oil, fill it with water, then we can freeze it. But you can see here where the clamp or the sleeve is put around the pipe. It's secured tightly. These Dewar tanks, which we own our own tanks, are filled with liquid nitrogen. We inject it and it evaporates much like dry ice. Now out of these vents in the top, if we happen to see liquid nitrogen dripping on the ground, we just turn the throttle valve on the tanks down a little bit because it doesn't hurt anything it just we're wasting liquid nitrogen but we want to keep the pipe surrounded in liquid nitrogen to freeze it now what this gentleman is doing here he's got a temperature sensors in his hand and there's wires that go to this side of the pipe and this side of the pipe and it's hard to see these wires but you can see them in other pictures we have to monitor that constantly to make sure that you get a solid now here's a freeze in a water treatment plant this was in uh, las vegas actually um, but you can see this clamp is put on the nitrogen has not started to flow yet but here is what that looks like once it's frozen. Now I know because it's a white pipe, it's hard to see, but you can see a frost line here, just a little bit on the right-hand side, about six inches outside the clamp. And that's what you another, want to see. Oh, sorry, another question, Steve. Um, sure. 
Do you have any danger of embrittlement and pipe breaking due to freezing? No, not on metallic based pipes. Um, none. Okay. If you get into again the PVCs, uh, AC cement, things like things, you can freeze them, but most of the time PVC will crack. AC because the expansion will crack. Um, some of the new newer pipes, um, the um, poly pipes, the uh, Rayhow, the um, gosh, I'm coming to the loss for words. The the pipes they use for services, Municipex. Um, Municipex, because of its ability to expand and contract, we can do some of those smaller lines, but most people, you can just pinch those because it's a flexible pipe. But no, there is no uh, structural integrity or, or degradation of the pipe from freezing. Good question, though. <clears throat> um, let me back up to that. You can see the on that picture, you can see the temperature sensors, the wires here, just again, so we can monitor what's going on. We don't want you to cut a hole in that pipe or cut a pull a valve out not knowing that, that plug is frozen. This is a picture of a, uh, this is actually the Phoenix Cardinals football stadium in, in Phoenix, Arizona, or in Glendale, Arizona, but their fire line, they, somebody neglected to put a valve in, in the original plans. We came in, we did a pipe freeze, they took the Victaulic couplings apart, and literally when you do this type of a freeze, you have a gallon or two of water come out of this fitting, so it's, when you do these freezes indoors especially, we do a lot of work for AT&T and companies that have data centers and cables and servers, they really frown on water. So it's tough to drill holes in pipes. So we will come in and do a freeze. Works much better. Um, here's again, a picture of a freeze with a good frost lines outside of the, way outside the collar. So we know this is frozen very well. Now, some of you may be thinking, how do you get rid of that pipe plug when you're done, that ice plug? Well, we have a unique way of doing that because if you have an ice plug like on a service line for a plumber, they would just unwrap their service blanket and they would walk away. Well, that plug will eventually melt, but that plug's gonna go down a line and you all know what head pressure is. Well, that plug's gonna go down a line and it, it, it one of two things, it'll either cause a restriction or it's gonna cause damage when it hits a valve, a, a 90, a T, some fitting type uh, scenario. So what we do, because nitrogen makes the plug adhere to the pipe like your tongue to the flagpole, what we do is we take a torch and we will heat a small channel on the very bottom of the pipe or in one section of the pipe. In this case, it's a vertical freeze, but we just heat a small channel. And once that channel is heated and water's trickling through there, we can stop. And if you ever, all ever seen a river or a stream where the sides will freeze in the wintertime, but the moving water in the center will not freeze. So that's what happens here. The water trickling through that channel will slowly erode that ice plug away and it's stuck to the pipe on the top like your tongue to the flagpole. So there's no big ice plug floating down the line or going down the line in a scenario like that. This particular picture here was a, a, a hospital that had a, a seven story hospital that had two valves that were bad. Well, in lieu of draining the whole seven floors, we can come in and do pipe freezes and they pulled the valves off and those valves were completely shot. There's a picture of them but they just put new valves on. Here's a, a good picture of the inside of a ice plug. Uh, this is a double five inch and a double four inch in a mechanical room. Another good Halloween picture of a ice plug. And that's pretty much freezing. It's pretty simple. Um, but anybody have any questions on freezing? If so, please ask and ask any time. Next thing we're going to go to is, is valve insertions. Valve insertions is a, a fairly new, and when I say fairly new, it's within the last eight to 10 years, these have become very popular. Valve insertions uh, are a, a way to put a valve in a line without ever shutting the service down. And usually done in, a, in an hour to three hours, depending on size. Um, two inch op nut on top, just like a regular AWWA valve. Same capabilities, same number of turns AWWA valves require. Um, currently from four inch to 24 inch sizes. Um, and they're, they're very unique. Now there's several brands out there currently. Um, there's Team, uh, there's uh, AVT valve, there's the Hydrostop Insta valve, which is actually what you're looking at. And there's, there's several other ones. There's always new ones coming out and there probably will be a couple of new ones coming out in the very near future that are gonna be very exciting. But these are a unique scenario. Um, would you use these if you're putting in a new water system? No, because you'd re use a regular MJ by MJ or a flange by flange or MJ by flange valve as you're building the system. But if you have a system that has possibly a valve that doesn't work, 
or possibly it's frozen in the open position. These are unique because you could drop one of these in five feet from your old valve, take the valve box off, put it on this valve, and just bury the other valve. Leave it, leave it in line. Um, we do a lot of these in front of fire hydrants. A municipality may have a fire hydrant that needs to be worked on or isolated, and as opposed to shutting down 40 or 50 houses, um, we can drop one of these right in front of the fire hydrant and shut the hydrant off, isolate it so it can be worked on. But this particular brand, and again, there's several different brands out there, but this particular brand is made by Hydrostop. It's called the Insta Valve. It looks much like a, a stainless steel tap sleeve, much thicker, but it's got a, a EDPM rubber seal. It's got a, a plastic polymer a composite cartridge, bronze carrier, stainless steel stem, two inch op nut. It's installed with this valve cartridge up here in the upper position, so it's never blocking the flow. Um, and I'll show you some pictures of some installations. Again, it's put on much like a, a tap sleeve. We don't cut a hole in the pipe till we make sure it's completely sealed. We'll put a temporary valve on, we'll close this temporary valve, then we will pressure test this valve and the sleeve. Again, we don't want to cut a hole in the pipe till we know it's sealed tightly. Once it's, that's sealed, we will put the shell cutter on. Remember, that's just a fancy name for a hole saw. We'll put it on top, it's sealed with nuts, bolts, and gaskets, put it on top. We open the temporary valve and then the shell cutter goes right down in and bores a hole in the pipe. Once that's done, we pull the shell cutter back up and we close that valve. Once that valve is closed, now the cartridge is put back in this, we take the hole saw out of this cartridge here, out of this sleeve here, and we put this cartridge in this sleeve. We put it back on top of the valve. Now at this point, this valve is actually shutting off the water. This is hot, it's live. So we put this cartridge back on top here with nuts, bolts, and gaskets, bolt it up tight, watertight, open this temporary valve and then push that cartridge down into the valve. At that point, once it's in there, then we tighten all the set screws around the outside of the flange and it holds the cartridge in the valve. Now this is a, at this point a live valve. It's in the open position so water is still flowing down this line. But the temporary valve is taken off and then all the set screws around the outside of the flange are screwed in so it holds the, the top of the cartridge in. Again, at this point it's live. Now the Flange can be put on the top. The op nut can be put on the top. At that point, you're done. You have a regular valve. Um, again, can be done on AC, ductile, C900, um, a myriad of different valves. Uh, can be done a double, single. This particular one is a uh, cooling tower um, that had no valves, had a bad pump, and they didn't want to freeze because, uh, again, it was all insulated lines and whatnot. So. They opted to put in insert valves. We did one on the inlet and the outlet side, shut it down. And they were able to take their pump out of service and work on it. OK, I'm sorry I'm blowing through these fast, but that was a quick lesson on insert valves. Any questions on that? Um, not, some, we've ahead. got we do have a question. Um, at sure. what point do you make a decision to not use these insert valves? Um, I'm not sure what the question is other than the fact that a lot of times people ask, what's the decision? How do you determine whether you use a line stop or an insert valve? And if that's possibly what the question is, if, if you're going to, if you need a valve and you will be using the valve, you know, a couple times a year, um, three, four, five, ten times a year, then you want to put in a valve. If you're going to just shut it off once to work on a pump once every five, six years, you're more likely to put in a line stop because line stop one's going to be cheaper and two, you're not going to be operating it all the time. You can always dig up that same line stop fit and install a stop if you ever have to replace a pump or something. Um, I, I hope that answered the question. I'm not sure where you're going with it. At, at what point? I don't know. Yeah, if there's a I point. think it did. We got a thumbs up there and then okay. two more came in after that. Um, sure. Is there a reduction in diameter for the insert valve? And would the insert valve meet a WWA specs for a water provider? Yes, on both. Um, the insert valves, again, there's many different brands. There's, there's Currently, there's four brands in the market. There's two new ones that are coming out that I can't even talk about yet. But there, there's many brands out there. The particular one I just showed you uses the pipe as the seat. So that rubber wedge, the EDPM wedge I talked about, goes in and seats on the bottom of the pipe. Is there a reduction in, in flow? No, it's it's full port. It's an on size tap. So if it's a six inch pipe, it's a six inch hole. If it's a four inch uh, pipe, it's a four inch hole. 
up to 24 inch, so on and so forth. Um, there is no restriction in water flow. And as far as AWWA, yes, they are all approved for AWWA. Now, there are a couple out there, and there's a new one coming out, and I, again, I can't talk too much about it, that has its own integral seat. So it does have a seat and a valve that can actually come out and be repaired or replaced like a regular valve without stopping the water or interrupting the water. But no, there is no uh, interruption of flow. There is no reduction in flow. Um, they work great, and they're a, a great scenario. They are a little more expensive than a line stop. Um, but when you add up, it, let's say you have a 12-inch line running down the street, and you need to shut that 12-inch line down for some reason, but you maybe have 100 houses, 200 houses, 300 houses. You have to notify. Now you have to do door hangers. Um, what if there's a school or a shopping center or a hospital possibly? Now you have to notify the fire department that you will be shutting down that line because there's fire lines. So there's a lot involved with that. You can come in and put a insert valve in without notifying anybody because you're not shutting the line down. You put in the insert valve, do what you need to do, put in a valve box. At the time the municipality needs to shut it down, that's when you can initiate those other types of things without um, digging the valve up again. I hope that answers that question. Any others? Um, yeah. Are any of these insert valves, quote unquote, on the shelf? Yes. Well, let me clarify that. Yes, they're on the shelf in our warehouses. Um, you're not going to go to a, a, a Corrin, Maine, or a Ferguson, or a, a Kempner, or a, any of the other, um, in other states, any of the other vendors or, or waterworks houses and buy these valves. They don't carry them because, one, there's about $100,000 of equipment that needs to install these. Um, they're not going to buy those. They don't want to buy them. They don't want to carry them. It's much like line stop sleeves. They'll carry tap sleeves, but they don't carry line stop sleeves. Um, but as far as being in stock, yes. All of our branches in the Western United States in 12 locations or 12 states have these stocked. Um, one unique thing about Tapmaster, and again, I'm not trying to do an advertisement for us, is we use each other's branches. And if we have a two inch insert valves in Las Vegas and they use a couple and they don't have any, we use Southwest Airlines a lot to ship valves from our different locations. So we can have a valve branches out of a valve. We can have a valve there in usually a matter of hours. Um, but the answer to your question is yes, we stock these valves. That it? Good questions, though. Awesome questions. Yeah, I think, and, I think that's it. There's a couple typing. Okay. I no, can see typing. the dots. But. Keep typing. That's, that's no, awesome. Like yeah, I think we're good. Okay. Um, and I, I really enjoy these questions. Thanks, all of you, for asking them because, again, when I'm doing a presentation like this, it's hard to cover every nuance of every service that's available to you out there. Um, insert valves is just one one of those scenarios. Um, again, there's several different brands. Each of them has their own um, pros and cons. Um, just depends on what you want, what you need. But they overall, the insert valve is a, a very unique product that was uh, – long overdue and frankly the person who invented them is probably sitting on a beach in Barbados right now but uh, great product so if you have any questions email me text me um, by the way I will have my email at the end of this and the phone number if you have any questions again not sales pitch I'd be glad to answer questions and help you out any way I can um, next we're going to go to uh, hot tapping or wet tapping same thing just different nomenclature um, depends on who you talk to it's a hot tap or it's a wet tap but it's basically if you have a 12 inch line running down the road and you're going to put 350 houses in, you have to tap into that live 12 inch main. What we do is put on a sleeve on that main, we'll put a valve on that main, we'll tap through the valve into that pipe, and when we leave, we leave a valve that the contractor can hook his houses up to and just open the valve and they're all live. So again, it's a, a service that's done, never interrupting service for anybody. Um, all types of pipes, conditions, yeah, inside, outside, upside down, right side up, um, up to 36 inch. Normally, we also own equipment up to 60 inch, and we do 60 inch valves or taps probably half a dozen times a year, not many. Most of the municipal taps are 36 inch and below, but we do larger ones and we do own our own equipment, which is unique. And I'll show you some pictures of those. But basically the tap is you have a pipe, a sleeve is put on the pipe, a valve is put on the pipe. Now this valve is going to stay there. And then we put our tapping machine on it. 
We pressure test this sleeve in the valve to make sure again, there's no leaks around the pipe. At that point, we open the valve, we tap down in through it, we pull the coupon back out, close this valve, we go away. And what's left is, well, this is basically what it looks like. This is a 12 inch C900 line. Um, the valve is on the pipe, the sleeves on the pipe, been pressure tested, and what we're doing now is tapping it. And this is what it looks like when we're done. Uh, when we're done, we leave, we leave a valve that's live, it's in off position, obviously, but the contractor or developer will hook into this line, and when he opens it up, his whole development is now live. So it's basically adding a trunk line or a branch uh, water line or line on any other existing pipe. Now, I get asked this question a lot of times, and this is a very small coupon. It's only a three-inch coupon. Um, and by the way, the coupon, when I say coupon, the coupon is the round section of pipe that we pull back out. I don't know why it's called coupon or whoever gave it that name. It's the chunk that comes back out. But this is a small coupon, but people ask me, where do the chips and shavings go? Well, usually when you're tapping a line, you're tapping into a live water line that's under pressure. So as you're cutting into that line, as water starts to leak out through your cuts, it's pushing all the shavings and whatnot back into um, the tapping machine. As you can see here, I'll back up a little bit. This 12 inch tap, here you can see the PVC shavings that are on the ground that came back out with water flow. So you may have a couple of small chips that go into the line, but majority of the time, this is the outside where these shavings are. This is this uh, brown coating is on the inside of the pipe, but they, most of the shavings do come back out. Now, this is a, a scenario that we run into a lot of times where somebody may have a, a blind flange. This is a particular one is a 36 inch, it's two inches thick, but they needed to tap into it. So rather than shutting down the whole system to put on a tapped blind flange, we can actually weld a boss onto this and tap into it, put a valve on it, tap into it. And again, this was two inches thick. So it was a very thick uh, flange, but it's something that's very doable. You don't have to think about draining your system to do some of these things. Call somebody to find out what services are available to you before you go into that. This is just a normal waterworks tap. Um, this was a gas line on the side here and it had a, a grounding blanket wrapped around it again. So if there was any errant sparks or anything, it, it stayed away from them. Uh, this particular scenario was a, a, a leaching acid solution at one of the large mines in Arizona. Um, but we do a lot of this type of work where we weld the boss onto the tank, we put the valve on, we pressure test the, the boss and the valve, we put our tapping machine on and we tap it. Um, but we do a lot of that. This particular tank is stainless steel. So it just, again, showcases some of the services that are available to you out there. Um, it doesn't have to be just steel. Stainless steel is, is very workable also. But this is uh, actually a, a raffinite leaching solution in this tank, so it's a very caustic solution. Picture of a coupon. Uh, again, the coupon is just the chunk that comes out of the pipe. I just wanted to show you this because um, a lot of people wonder what happens to that piece of pipe. Well, I know it's hard to see, but on this pilot drill here, there's wires that stick out. So as this pilot drill goes through the pipe, those wires fold back in, and when it goes through the pipe, they spring out. So when we pull the shell cutter out, and the shell cutter is just this big hole saw, when we retract it back out, it pulls this coupon back out with it. This is a 36 inch coupon, so this is a very large one. Um, this is a 24 inch coupon. Again, you can see a little bit of the capture wires that are sticking out the sides. Um, but again, as we go through the pipe, those wires spring out. So when we retract the hole saw or the shell cutter, it pulls the coupon back out with it. Uh, here's one of the ones I was referring to before. This is a 60 inch tap. We don't do a lot of these a year, but we own our own equipment to do these large taps. Uh, what's unique about this is it's a large valve, um, a large tap. And if you look at this uh, hydraulic motor here, it's about the size of a small V8 engine, but we do these pretty regularly. Um, not an everyday occurrence, but we do them. But this is a, a good picture of the shell cutter or the hole saw and the pilot drill. This is not a hole saw that you go to Ace Hardware Store and buy. It's a, a 60 inch cutter, very expensive. And, and again, most of the services we do or the companies like us do are the equipment is where the expense is. So can cities buy these types of equipments for insert valves or for tapping or for line stopping? Absolutely they can. But is a city gonna spend $100,000 on the equipment to put in a couple insert valves in a year? It's not cost effective. It's much more cost effective to call a service company such as us to do those types of things. Same thing with this tapping. Who's gonna carry 60 inch tapping equipment? Very few people in the United States do. Um, this is just a picture of a, a tap being done uh, on AC pipe. Again, I wanted to show the AC. This is a 24 inch shell cutter getting ready to do a tap. Um, again, you can see the a little bit of the capture wire sticking out here. 
just a, a tap on an inside of a, a building in a boiler room. Another waterworks tap. Uh, this is a 36 inch hot tap. Uh, again, good picture of a 36 inch coupon. Small little hole saw there. The uh, reason I took these pictures is it illustrates HDPE. HDPE in several states is becoming very popular. If you go up to Denver, it's used quite often. Um, Arizona it has not been embraced as, as much yet. Um, I'm sure in the future it will. But we do a lot of work on HDPE pipe, especially for the mines. But uh, line stopping or tapping, things like that, it's very, very easy to do. Okay, specialty fittings. We're wrapping up here. Specialty fittings, I want to get into just a few of these. We do a lot of things. We use companies like JCM, TPS, um, Ford, Mueller, uh, all these different companies that make these products that all of you use almost every day. But these companies are very good at making specialty things, and we're very good at asking them to make specialty things because we get in a lot of scenarios where weird things are asked of us. Um, but I'll show you just a few pictures of those things. This is a picture actually inside Intel. We do a lot of work for Intel, Boeing, um, again, shopping centers, casinos in all the states we're in. So we do a lot of work, but I had to get permission to take this picture. But the reason I took this picture is there's a line here and a line here that run parallel. Well, they wanted to cut into this line on the left, but they wanted to go to the right. Well, they couldn't with the outlet because that other pipe's in the way. So we came up with this, what we call a save a T fitting. It's basically a weld on fitting that's welded onto the pipe. There's a butterfly valve here on this end, and we end up cutting in and cutting through the pipe here and tapping it this way, putting a completion plug in here. So the liquid flows this way, and we, we achieved essentially what the customer needed to have done. Now, what that fitting looks like, and I apologize, it's a little bit of a blurry picture, but once we're done tapping this, this is the completion plug that goes inside. It's got O-rings all the way around it, and then there's set screws around the edge of the flange that get driven in and hold that completion plug in place. Then this blind flange gets swung up there and bolted in place with the nuts, bolts, and gaskets. Again, basically to keep the dirt out. But the unique thing is we can come back in years later and put a stop in this line if they ever needed to change this valve out or and stop it for any other reason. Yes. I feel no, like I'm please. interrupting. Okay. Um, so I would so question slash comment. I would think there would be a lot of debris from the whole saw cuts. Any way to minimize from getting into the water in the pipe? Yes. Again, as I said, when when we are either cutting into a pipe either with an insert valve or a tap, there's already pressure in the pipe. So as our hole saw starts integrating into the pipe, water is pushing back out under pressure. So probably 95% of the shavings and whatnot come back out into our tapping machine. So when we're done and we pull the shell cutter back out, when we retract it out and close the valve, we take our shell cutter off and most of the shavings are in there. There's no way to, to stop 100%. There's not a tapping company or line stop company or valve insertion company anywhere in the world that can stop 100% of the shavings. But again, 90 to 95% of them do come out with the shell cutter. Um, have any of you ever looked in your toilet tank? I don't mean to go here, but look in the back of your toilet tank sometime. You'll see these little rocks and stones and pebbles, and sometimes you get little rust spots. That's what those are. That's stuff that's in our water lines that either a tapping or a drilling or a boring has taken place somewhere and they come up into our houses. Um, a lot of times on your kitchen faucet, you can unscrew the little filter on the end of your uh, kitchen faucet. There's a little screen there. Same thing. You'll have a little uh, gravel or possibly a little chunk of metal. That's from a tap or a line stop. Um, it's just inherent with the business. But again, 95, 90 to 95% of the taps, um, the shavings and crumbs and sawdust, if you will, come out with the tap, with the line stop. That answer that question? Hopefully. <clears throat> yeah, um, this, so. <laughs> no, and if again, if anybody has any questions, please don't be shy. Ask. This is a good time to do it. Um, this is a 54 inch ductile iron line that was 23 feet deep. And I don't know if any of you have ever been in a 23 feet deep hole. I got to go down and take these pictures and it is eerie. It's a long way down and you can't see a lot of daylight. Um, it's so deep that they actually had to pump air down in to keep workers. Uh, I don't know what gases they were worried about because this was a water line, but whatever it was, it's just a deep hole. But you don't walk into a Corrin, Main or a Ferguson or a Kempner or any of these other waterworks houses and ask for a 54 by 16 inch saddle. They don't have them on the shelf. So this is where we use JCM in particular made this one. They wanted a floating hub saddle, so we called JCM and they made it for us. Works out very well. 
Uh, this is a picture again of stainless steel. This was a uh, Budweiser uh, uh, fermenting facility in California. Um, again, I just wanted to illustrate two things here. One, stainless steel we work on, and the other is tapping at an angle. Have any of you ever tried to take a drill bit or a drill and a drill bit and drill a hole at a 45 degree angle? It's kind of tough because the drill bit tends to walk around a little bit. We have jigs and fixtures that hold those shell cutters in place so we can bore at literally any angle. Uh, thermal wells, this is just something again that some municipalities use, some don't, factories use them. It's basically a test tube. Uh, this is closed at the end, it's open at this end where a temperature or a thermometer can be put in the line of a pipe to monitor what the temperature of the pipe is or the contents of the pipe is. The boss is welded on the outside of the pipe. Looks like that. The pipe is now tapped. This thermal well has got thread sealant put on it, and that's what it is. Just look like a closed end test tube. It's got sealant put on it. We put that on, open the valve. We install that in the fitting. And that's what it looks like when we're done. This test tube now protrudes into the pipe with the end closed so they can stick a, stick a thermometer or whatever instrument they needed to into the pipe. Um, peach plugs, again, not used very often, sometimes in chemical injections or where there's a scenario where you have to check pressures or temperatures. But it basically looks like a little air chuck you would use uh, to fill air in your tires. Um, it's put on, you got a little dust cap on the end, you pull it off, you stick your probe in, you can either do pressure or sensor. When you pull it out, there's two little valves closed, you put this dust cap on, it looks like that. Um, this was a, a job in California, very unique, uh, a 69 inch, a 90 inch, and a 96 inch line where they needed to put injection quills to inject uh, chemicals into the water lines. Um, I don't have all the pictures that I could but it just goes on forever but these again these are saddles that we called our, our, one of our vendors and had manufactured because you don't walk in and ask for a uh, 96 inch quadruple strap saddle um, but this is here they are being installed they're actually here they're just marking out where the inlet's going to be and then they take this saddle off and we have to chip all the concrete off the pipe to install them but again it's just one of the things we get into that's it hopefully i didn't put anybody to sleep um, here's my name my email my contact number uh, if you have a question, please feel free. Whether you use us or somebody else, I'd be glad to answer any questions you may have. Um, application questions you may have about something, if it can be done or if not can be done, please let me know. I'll be glad to help. Next slide is next month, uh, December 12th, I believe it is. If I'm not mistaken. Is that correct, Shana? Date? Oh, I should definitely know that. Um, uh, oh, it is. It's at the very top. I'm sorry, December 16th. I yeah, I'm sorry, I'm not sure. Wednesday, no. December 16th, yeah. yeah. December, 16th. December 16th from 12 to 1 p.m. It's uh, it's going to be a very, very informative uh, presentation. Um, Jeff Bauer uh, from the town of Gilbert is the host. He'll be introducing uh, Nick Rosner, who is with Eaton. Uh, they will be talking about the variable frequency drives uh, for your motors, pumps, those kind of things. So please stay tuned. Uh, December 16th from 12 to 1, put it on your calendar. It's going to be a very informative thing. You'll want to see it. Again, it's an hour, and you'll get credit for it. So that's it. December 16th, put it on your calendar. <laughs> Great. Steve, Thank question. you so much. Yes. Yep. Uh, ballpark cost to do like an eight inch tap valve or insert a uh, valve. Insert valve? Uh, you know, a ballpark versus is a freezing versus uh, uh, bypass. Like, say we had to put an eight-inch valve and all those things on an eight-inch DIP line. You asked, uh, there's like 16 questions there. Um, oh, all right, never mind then. No, 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 no. I, I will tackle them the best I can. You know, uh, the, the cheapest way to stop water or the least expensive way to stop water would be a line stop. But it's if you need to stop it once or, or you know, maybe twice in its life or 16 times in the next 20 years, a line stop is going to definitely be the most economical way to do it. If you want to stop water to where you don't have to cut into the pipe or possibly dig back in the street to the main um, to replace possibly a curb stop or a corp stop or an angle meter stop on the on a on a meter setter, freezing is the best way to go because you got a copper line, usually soft copper, where you can freeze it without digging back to the corp stop in the street. Um, an insert valve, again, if you need a valve and you have an existing line without digging many craters and shutting people off an insert valve is probably the way to go um, again a little more expensive than a line stop um, 
you know, there's just so many variables. And and, and to give you a, a a rule of thumb figure, boy, I, it, that's tough. Okay. I, I'd have to say probably anywhere between twelve and fifteen hundred dollars an inch on an insert valve. But again, there's there's way way too many variables to to give you a hard fast number. Um, I hope that helps. But again, when you think of the things you have to do as far as notifying the fire department, door hangers, shutting down people, things like that, insert valves. It's amazing when you start talking to municipalities about insert valves and their first reaction is, wow, these are expensive. Well, would you rather get your guys out there, five or six guys out there? Let's cut the water off. Let's shut it down. You're going to have to buy a valve anyway. You're going to have to get mega lugs. You're going to have to somehow disinfect, chlorinate, blah, 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 all that stuff. And once they put one in, they say, man, I'll, I'll never stop using those. So they're, they're one of those products that's, um, I don't know if any of you are familiar with it, what a mega lug is. In the old days, you used to have to use rebar and restraints and concrete. Well, when mega lugs came out, they restrain pipe. Well, they're a little more expensive because they do things that you would have to do very laboriously and time consuming so they can ask a little more for it. Um, I think that's where the manufacturers come up with these, these their pricing when they do their structures. Um, but they're, they're all, all three are great, whether it be line stop freezing or an insert valve. They're all three great. They all three have different scenarios. And again, those are the kind of things we can talk about. If anybody has a question, whether it be an engineer or a, an end user or a homeowner, it doesn't matter. Um, those are the kind of things you can call us and we can offer different scenarios or different uh, possibly recommendations for you. I hope that answered that question. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> Sorry. And then back to your the custom taps. So like I did a CIPP tap on a, I think it was a 50 inch CIPP. We uh -huh. did a down to 20 inch tap. Okay. So we had to custom order a saddle for that. So you guys, from a what you do standpoint, we could say, hey, we need a quote for that. You would go get the saddle quoted Correct. from someone else and do the actual tapping? Correct. Okay. And, and, and again, there's, when you get into that kind of pipe, there's, there's many different ways you can do that. You can have bolt-on fittings. You can have weld-on fittings. Particular pipes that don't actually make, like if you're going through the bonding wire, you still have to chip into the pipe and, and tack the ends. But yeah, if again, this type of scenario, you probably want to call us and let us know what you're up against or what you're working with. We can recommend the way we think it'd be best to go and more beneficial for you to go, whether it be a, a bolt on or a weld on. But yes, we we order the fittings. We do everything. You just say you have a 50 inch duct or a 54 inch duct line and you need to put a 20 or 24 inch tap in it. Give me a price. We will we will work all that up. Cool. Any other questions? Okay, again, thanks everybody. I appreciate it. Make sure again you tune in on December 16th uh, from 12 uh, Arizona time. And this will be a very informative on uh, VFDs. And put it on your calendar. Other than that, thank you all. Appreciate it. Have a great day. If we can help, let us know. Thanks, Steve. You bet. Take care, everybody.